Top Northern trainer Richard Farhi has a strong squad assembled for Royal Ascot, and I'm here at his Musley Bank stables near Malton to take a closer look at his leading contenders. The next race for Garswood is uh, going to be fascinating, isn't it? Because uh, you could just draw a big red line through the 2,000 guineas. Yeah, it was it was frustrating for everybody. Um, I mean, when the stalls opened, he he was half in the air and got messed about, got turned side, was never got into the race. It, it just one of them races you just love to go down and do it all again. I'm not saying we'd beat the winner there, but I think he was good for another two or three lengths, you know. So. Uh, but look, he's a horse we think an awful lot of. He'll be in the St James's at Ascot and he'll also be in the Jersey. We'll see what the ground's like. He's not a horse I'd like to, at, at this early time in his career to run him on real fast concrete ground now. He's got form on fast ground and soft ground, but if it, if it was rattling there, I wouldn't be too keen to take him because there's plenty of races for him. I sort of hear Mac the foray at the end of the season at Longchamp is his race because uh, he doesn't mind a bit of juice in the ground. You tend to get it that time of the year. And it's... Uh, it's a Group 1, that's a, a race that we would like to win with him now, a, a Group 1 race, so we'll see what happens. But depending on the ground, he'll, he'll, he'll run at Ascot and we'll work away from that. And despite Newmarket, you've always had the belief that this horse could be top draw. He's, he's very talented at home, he's got a lot of gears and, you know, he's still learning his trade. And as, as the months go by, you can see him getting stronger and more mature mentally and physically. Uh, so I'm a little bit disappointed in the Guineas, but it's not a disaster. And, He's got plenty of time to get over it all now and, and plenty of races before the end of the season. As you say, trying to take a, a positive out of the race, he, he, he did finish well and made up an awful lot of ground. He did, to be fair. Uh, it was a frustrating race, but look, these things happen in racing and you just carry on, draw a line through it and, and kick on, you know. I would like to see what runs in the St James's. I mean, the, you know, you win a listed race, he's won a couple of listed races. Uh, you know, the next step is sort of group races, but. I'd, I'd, I'd just be interested to see what's turning up in each race, so we'll, we'll keep the options open. I'm not bothered seven or a mile, um, but I, I'll definitely get an entry in the jersey and we'll see what's turning up and make a decision close to the time, speak to the owners and walk away from there. Gabriel now picking up really well towards the outside of Don't Call Me with Sovereign Dead battling on well as Highland Knight fades. Gabriel hanging right over towards this near side. He's got his quirks, but he's got his talents and Gabriel goes on to win the Doncaster Mile. Gabriel has uh, some potentially big targets as well. He uh, set off his season by winning the Doncaster Mile, of course. What's, uh, what's in your mind for him? To be honest, he probably wants to get back to a more conventional track. I mean, Chester and Epsom probably aren't where he needs to be, but my own loves Chester there, and, and, and he ran there, and the only other race from was was at Epsom. He's just getting into a little bit of a habit of getting left at the start now, which is, which is making it difficult for him. But... Uh, I mean, there's a listed race at York the week before Ascot. Whether we go there or go to Ascot, we'll see. I mean, the the Queen Anne there seems to be seems to be two runner race and 16 to one bar two. You know, uh, the American horse I'm not that'll definitely run there. But I'm not sure where the Godolphin horse will go now. If he looked like going for the mile and a quarter, we might think about going there. But I think Ascot will suit him better than Chester and and uh, Epsom. So uh, he's a talented horse there, but we just need to get him get everything going. Whether whether he's a Group One horse, we'll see. I think the big key to him is getting back on a more conventional track, a big galloping track where he can just be a little bit easier to ride for the lads because he does wonder about in his races. That's a trait of his and I'm afraid I'm not going to iron that out anymore. I tried the visor on the other day and he still wondered about but maybe it was a track as well so we'll see. Backer out far side, Sandy Lane near side, 100 yards to go, Backer out and Sandy Lane, there's not a lot between them, Backer out far side, near side Sandy Lane, here's the wire, close, Sandy Lane and Backer out in a head bob. Backer out was uh, a dead heater at Ripon, a track that probably didn't play to his strengths uh, last time and he could go for the Wokingham. Yeah, just going to struggle to get in I think, uh, as we speak now he's 53 on the list, but when you look at the top of the list there's, there's group two and group Group three horses there. Whether they'll run or not, I don't know. These big sprint handicaps are getting tougher and tougher to get in. Um, but I've got the Buckingham Palace as a backup if we don't get in there. I'd love to run him in the Wokingham. He's a horse that we're sort of keeping for it. So uh, if he doesn't, but if, if he doesn't get in the Wokingham, we'll run the, in the Buckingham Palace. But he's a horse that if I if I have a life chance down there, it's probably him. You know. Yeah, and quick ground wouldn't be an issue for him, Richard, would it? He'd go on any ground, and he's he's improving the whole time. He's he's 
quite a talented horse and we feel he's there's more on the tank so uh, we'll see what happens at Ascot. We've seen him out this morning, he's, uh, he's a lovely fluid mover isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's a grand horse, a uh, horse we've always liked, he had a little problem there last year so he didn't race, race too often after air. Uh, Sir Robert's Gary Ogden has got him back right and came back looking a million dollars and well as you say he dead heated first time on a, on a track that didn't really suit. Um, but he's a horse that we're hoping that can do some, 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 some damage before the end of the season. One horse that certainly deserves to get ahead in front is Ladies First, who's been a model of consistency uh, in the Group 3, of course, at Epsom. And prior to that, a very creditable second in the Middleton at York. Yeah, she's she's just lacks a turn of gear. She would love him to go flat out and just grind it out. She's, she reminds me a little bit of Barefoot Lady there. She, she, she lacked a turn of, turn of gear as well. But in, in an ideal world, maybe a mile and one and flat out, and she, she'll battle and tough and game and... But uh, look, she's in it. She's in Alaska. I don't know whether she'll run or not. We'll speak to the owners. There is an easier race for her the week before. We might think about that. The York race as well. Um, it's called the Ganton. So we'll, we've got decisions to make on that. Is there a chance that she could, uh, like Barefoot Lady, go international? Yeah, there is. Yeah, she's she's penciled in in Arlington there, and uh, we would probably go to Canada with her as well because boat races are a mile one and a half on two turns. I think that's where she needs to be. Where Generally in America they go a gallop and I think that would suit her down to the ground. But she's tough and genuine and I think her day will come. Now we'll see we'll see about Ascot. The filly that beat her is probably the one we have to beat again, but she's only a length and a half behind her. They didn't go a great gallop that day, so it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm not sure whether she'll go or not, but we'll see. Richard, the two-year-olds are running really well. You must be delighted uh, with the progress they've made. And starting with uh, Kenyari, who scored on his debut at Doncaster. I mean, he's not... A, a massive horse, but he's quite well put together, and he looks a real street fighter, Richard. Yeah, he's he's quite a. I mean, he looks like a sprinter, and he's bred to be one, so he, he could be a quick horse now, you know. Um, he was a horse we liked an awful lot early on, and then he went so laid back on us now. So when he ran first time, we weren't surprised. We were just delighted that he went back to where we thought he was, and he looked he looked talented now, you know. He's the, the there was only a three runner race, but it, the third horse was beaten ten lengths, and he's come out and won, and the second horse has won, so. I mean, for me, he's probably one of the best two years in the country at the moment now, so we're, we're pleased with him. You know. He really had to get down and battle to win that race, and he did stamp his authority on it, didn't he, inside the final third? Yeah, he, as I said, he's, he's such a laid-back character there, and Paul had to grab hold of him, and to be fair to him, the instructions were, get at him early, because he's lazy, you know. But the thing I did like about him, he couldn't pull him up after the race. You know, once Paul grabbed hold of him and he took off, he, 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 was, he was ready to roll, you know. Parbold is uh, another dandy man, but he's uh, a very different type of horse again to look at. Uh, he was impressive when he won at York on debut on softish ground. Yeah, I, was, I nearly took him out. I was worried about the ground, to be honest, because it, it rained a lot at York. Um, but he's a horse with a lot of speed. and uh, he's, he's a sort of Ascot type of horse. I, I feel mentally he's there and he's got plenty of toe. And, you know, he's, he, he could be a horse that might run in the Coventry now. And of course, he's from the family of Majestic Miles, isn't he? So uh, a family you know well. Yeah, with Majestic Moon and Majestic Miles, but uh, this guy looks looks to be sort of on a par, if not better than them too. So we'll see. The other dandy man is uh, Penny of Phobia, who scored at Pontefract and then finished a good second at York. Uh, done nothing wrong, this horse. No, he was. Ah, look, I'm not saying we'd have beat the winner there, but he was just drawn a little bit out in the out in the middle of the track and. He'd won so well at Pontefract, he hadn't really learned much from, from his race at Ponty. I mean, he went more or less went round on the bridle and quickened up and didn't really have to get a hold of him. When Tony went from there the other day, there at York, he just lugged it, just greenness. Uh, but he's not a horse I'm going to rush now. He, he won't go to Ascot now. He'll probably go for the sales race at Newbury there. I mean, it's, it's 250,000 and it, it gives him another month. And I think another month will benefit that horse, so we'll see. He's well named, isn't he, for a racehorse? Uh, Pennyophobia means apparently fear of poverty. Yeah, well, I'm afraid most of my owners <laughs> have that fear because I take plenty of them every month. But uh, no, it's a wonderful name. I'm delighted you told me what it is because, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, he's still the dandy man. So we'll see. Eccleston's now got daylight the near side, and Eccleston is absolutely flying now, has come to hit the front inside the final furlong, and is roaring clear. Eccleston has quickly gone two or three lengths ahead, and will make an impressive debut for Richard Fahey and Tony Hamilton. Eccleston looks one to note, second place, just table for ten. Uh, you mentioned sales races, uh, that potentially could be an option for Eccleston, who was another debut winner at Doncaster, and looks a quick horse. Yeah, he, uh, he's, 
out of David Brad and David Armstrong. Um, look, we thought he'd win, and he did. Um, but look, he's got eight stone four in the Newbury Sprint as well. You see, and it's difficult. You know, I mean, he might get an entry in the Norfolk or the Windsor Castle and make a decision close to time. But you know, when you're looking at a two hundred and fifty thousand pound race three weeks later, it's 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 something you've got to keep in the back of your mind because he's only got eight stone four in it. And, Probably if, if if they ran the race today, he'd probably be favourite for it. So I've got to got to take that on board. But I how many more chances would you get to run off eight four and get weight off the majority of the field? Uh, not many. So this this is the, the the sort of question mark with Ascot coming up. That we, we don't really want to hurt them there and leave these races behind. There's a long season and there's some good races coming up. But I'll speak to David and see what he wants to do. He'll make the final decision because I know he'd be quite keen there because he's bred him to probably go to Ascot. But we'll see. What can we say about Sandiva? Because on all evidence so far, Richard, you've got something very, very special here. Yeah, she, uh, she she's as good as filly as we've had now. We uh, we uh, we thought she'd win the first time, and we'd have been very disappointed if she got beaten in, in Ireland. Be it, it looked a warm race, but the, the manner in which she did it, and Pat was delighted with her now, and sort of said, sort of felt, asked him which trip. He says any trip, it doesn't matter five or six. She looks a talented filly, and she's got a huge stride on her. And, she just loves the job and she goes fast easily so and she takes no training so uh, she'll probably go look I'll speak to the owners again we might put her in the Queen Mary we might put her in the Albany but she's the only two-year-old I actually penciled in six weeks ago for the Albany so uh, I was thinking that she would go to Ireland and win but we'll see how she is she's just come back from Ireland a little bit lighter than I'd like so we'll see how she is in the next 10 days yeah but certainly looking very relaxed out in the paddocks this morning yeah she's she's, she's a sweet filly um, as I say, takes no training, eats, does everything right. Uh, the good ones tend, tend to take no training and she is talented now. She's as good as two-year-old filly we've had now.